pheromones, which is, of course, our natural attraction to others, the way that we, um, you know, smell, you know, you smell a partner and they smell good to you, that, that smell turns you on. Now, um, this is not something that can be changed. If you have been in a long term relationship, say, and when you started out, this kind of animal attraction was once there, so this pheromone attraction, but the polarity now is off, this scenario can oftentimes be helped by doing deep emotional energetic work. If the natural attraction was never there, meaning, you know, you met someone, you were never really physically attracted to them, but you decided to be with them because of their resume, because of their status, because, um, you know, you, you just really liked them. They were a nice person and you decided to kind of marry uh, your best friend. That is a more difficult situation to uh, create balance in the polarity. It will be harder to create a balanced polarity in these kinds of relationships. Now, if the polarity isn't relatively balanced in the relationship, one or bo both partners will probably not be very interested in sex. That's just how it works. Um, however, it's important to understand that there is hope. So I can tell you that um, in my relationship, we are constantly doing things to strengthen our polarity. So sometimes that can be, um, for example, when I'm menstruating, there is no intimacy between us. That's time where I, um, I'm with myself, I'm processing emotions. Um, you know, a lot of women don't really realize that their menstrual cycle is actually an opportunity to download um, some very, very intuitive information and also to release emotion from our body. Our, you know, our body is actually shedding blood. Uh, and of course, you know, women feel very emotional when they are menstruating. This is an opportunity to release emotion. So when I go through this process of menstruating, for me, it is very important, and I know for a lot of other women that are connected to this lineage, to you know, that are connected to tantric practice, um, will take that time to be with themselves. So no intimacy. This is something that strengthens the polarity, because if you're constantly available to your partner that you're in a long-term relationship with, um, that is going to weaken the polarity between you. So you do want to create some distance sometimes, um, whether it be, uh, you know, I know that some couples will even sleep in, in separate rooms. Um, for me, that's not really so practical. You know, I, we have three kids and we, we like to sleep in the same bed, but we also do, um, do things to create separation between us. So this is, this is in term, this is essentially changing your behaviors. And, and doing things intentionally to create, um, to heighten and to intensify the natural attraction between you, okay? Now, if you're willing to, um, to dive deep and do this work, there are a number of things which you, uh, which you will need to do in order to help you um, deepen the polarity, deepen this magnetic pull that you have with your partner. So one is recognizing our role in, um, in a troubled relationship. So, you know, so many people, and I do this, of course, also, we all do this, is blame our partner for different things that are happening in their relationship. It's, it's so easy uh, to spiral down into blame and shame. It's much harder to look at the role that you are um, essentially bringing into the relationship and perhaps creating, um, creating issues in the relationship. So it's first recognizing our role. And part of that, a big part of that is taking responsibility for our emotions. So if you're feeling angry, if you're feeling isolated, if you're feeling sad, whatever emotion you're feeling in the relationship, 
it's taking responsibility for that emotion and not blaming your partner for creating that emotion in you. So if you can, if you can see that, you know, um, for example, if there was a partner, one partner who, um, who made a meal, cooked a meal, let's say it was, let's say it was the guy, he cooked a meal and, um, and usually it was traditionally maybe the woman's role to cook the meal. And the woman came home and saw that, you know, her husband had cooked a meal. And for her, for this particular woman, she felt like, she, like he had kind of stepped in on her territory. And that made her feel upset, angry, uh, unloved, unwanted, okay? For another woman, she would come home and say, oh my gosh, wow, thank you so much, honey. You've, you know, you've made this meal for me. And, and that would be um, something that she would really love. So different scenarios will elicit different emotional reactions in different people. So it's recognizing that, that your emotions are yours. And the fact that somebody did something doesn't mean that they created that emotion within you. Now, it's also learning to deeply listen to our partners, listening to their emotions, to their feelings, and not um, very quickly trying to defend yourself if they are talking about how they feel or or their perspective so it's learning to deeply listen now another thing that's very important is learning to focus on our own personal transformation and not what we think our partner needs to change so this is a big one um and of course we all want to uh you know quote unquote fix our partners because we think that there are so many things wrong with them that's not going to lead to any transformation in the relationship if each partner focuses on their own personal transformation and growth and recognizes where they need to change where they need to grow then the the relationship can really evolve and transform it's also very important that we learn to lower our expectations. We have so many expectations of our partner, what we think that they should be doing and what, what we want to, them to do and how we think that they should act. If you have lots and lots of expectations, um, you're going to be very disappointed in your relationship. So all of these things have a very profound effect on the polarity and of course, working on cultivating our own sexual energy. So this is, this is ultimately our own responsibility. It's not our partner's responsibility to constantly be, be turning us on. So if that's, if that's kind of the, the pattern that you're in, where you think, you know, and you're, you're in this long-term relationship and you think that your partner needs to be responsible for turning you on, you probably aren't gonna be turned on very often. If you start to take control for cultivating your own sexual energy and this is something that needs to be cultivated otherwise it really does die down if you take responsibility for cultivating that energy you will find that you will be turning yourself on and um, that that you know responsibility this perceived responsibility that we put onto our partners for uh, turning us on um, will be alleviated and you will find yourself being turned on naturally very easily. So all of these things um, are related to polarity and maintaining healthy polarity in relationships. Um, that is all for today. Thanks again for being with us on Divine Couples. Feel free to check us out at www.divine-couples.com and our social media page on Instagram is at divine.couples, adding intimacy, passion, and healing to your lives. Thanks for joining us on Divine Couples. I am your host, Naomi Slater. Thank you for listening to our podcast, What No One Knows. If you have a story to share, contact Now Publishing at publish at nowscpress.com. Visit our website, publishwithnow.com for a free download from our The 90 Day Author book and let Now Publishing build, publish, and sell your book.